do do do. Hey guys, welcome to episode 30 of the weekly back at our new time of 3 p.m. Eastern and early and bright and sharp for Mr. Juan Bagnell. How's it going, man? We don't have any. I was muted. Uh, yeah. Sorry, that's. Uh, I was just gonna mime. Oh, look at this! I'm trapped <laughs> in a box in your computer. I, mean, we were try I, I was trying to give you your, you know, your, your hype well. there. Yeah, you did that <laughs> kind of well, man. A little too well. <laughs> it's, so you know, the uh, the the expensive college education that I paid for uh, is coming in handy for my paid podcast. for. We're still paying and, for. And, and this is when we all found <laughs> out. Come on, we're, we're all still paying. Is a secret mime superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and of never me and my man in the same room together. I'm just saying. So true, true. And we have, of course, uh, Black Iron underscore Man Sam. How's it going, man? How you doing, everyone? Good. And finally, the one and only Mr. Warren Bowen. What's going on, man? Let's do this. So as you guys can see, we've got only three topics because we call it pretty much the uselessness week on a very large scale. Um, let's start off with the first one um, and. Qualcomm filed a lawsuit stating that Apple uh, was uh, basically, just to put it in English, stealing their source code and giving it to Intel to improve their LTE chipsets. Uh, they filed the suit this week. They did say that um, this suit, they wanted to be added, of course, to the general overall losses that they have, but they can also they also consider this separate because this is a big infringement of some of the contract deals. Now, Qualcomm stated that um, with their contract with uh, Apple, Apple was the only company who asked for access to this code, and Qualcomm agreed, specifying there must be an audit to its use case. They tried to get an audit, Apple refused to do the audit, so they had to sue to get the deposition for the audit. And when they got the deposition, they saw information going back and forth between the individuals stating that some code was used, which is why now they are suing about this. So basically, and, and in my mind, I go, well, kind of now makes sense that Apple now says we have gigabit LTE. Um, and you know, I, there was much better performance boost on the iPhone XS Max and the XS, but it also shows that it, to me, it's, it's, it's really egregious if you do this, if this is true, by the way, uh, I reached out to Apple, Apple did <laughs> allegedly, <respond>. allegedly, <laughs> yes, allegedly, yes. Um, like I said, I reached out to Apple, Apple has not responded, I reached out to Qualcomm, Qualcomm sent over the, um, I have to, sorry, I do have to share that to you, the, the filing information. Um, and just give a breakdown of what they, they claimed happened and how they went through the whole process. So as you guys have seen this, and of course, you know, the markets have responded. There was also the ITC ruling yesterday that said that Apple did infringe on one of Qualcomm's patents. This is on their overall case, but they refused to ban the imports of iPhones. Now the judge hasn't given his final ruling on what it will be, but that's also there as well. So I want to ask you guys, what do you think about this? This specifically Qualcomm's claim of Apple basically intentionally taking their source code and giving over to Intel and saying, Intel, fix your stuff for us so that we don't have to use Qualcomm because you're giving us cheaper rates because that's pretty much what it looks like to me. It's a whole, uh, well, we're an American company. We're just going to do what we want to do and screw these foreign guys. We'll just give the code to another American company and deal with it later because we'll have the Qual Qualcomm is an American company also. I know, but that, but I know they are, but they just, it's just, just, that's their mindset. That's their mindset. It's BS. It's complete BS. Uh, they shouldn't even be, um, to, to steal and then sit back and go, well, we didn't really. You know, still like it's. Well, yeah, they haven't I mean, they we haven't stated anything. We should it, we shouldn't be turning to corporations as the the holders of virtue. Uh, uh, Apple, this is a bad look for Apple because of how viscerally they sued other companies over things like rounded rectangular UI design software gimmicks. You know, so if if we do start to find evidence of this type of corporate machinations, then I think they need to get tagged pretty hard. But I think it's it's unfortunate. I think a lot of people who would watch our podcast um, understand is this is just 
a fee for doing business as far as Apple's concerned. They're going to make way more money in some kind of, if it's true, they're going to make way more money in some kind of relationship with Intel sharing this type of proprietary information. And they'll pay, I don't know, a billion, two billion to Qualcomm for some kind of licensing snafu. Uh, and it, it'll, it'll affect their bottom line 1% over a fiscal year, but they'll have made so much money on top of that by doing business this way that it pretty much validates the behavior regardless of whether or not they're found guilty or innocent or innocent. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam, what do you think? Um, what, what can you really say? It, it seems as though we have, okay, first of all, you have to wait um, for all this to be done before you know exactly what happens, right? Now, I'll just say that right off the bat, but if it just seems quite obvious that, um, you know, this is like what Juan said, it's pretty true, right? It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> so they've gone ahead and they've shared the information, if they have allegedly shared the information, and now they will be left with a better product that they're probably going to sell. Um, Intel is going to be more beholden to Apple because Apple has done them a huge solid. Um, the market is going to be a little bit more competitive because Intel was um, really lagging behind Qualcomm. But at the end of the day, it's all about how much Apple is going to pay for this infringement of, uh, of, of Qualcomm's um, um, IP. And at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to be enough to make a dent to Apple's profitability in the long run. So for Apple, it's a win-win. Um, it's kind of like a win-win game. Uh, but for Qualcomm, I, I am just worried because I think we all remember, um, what was it? Uh, GT Advanced uh, Technologies, mm -hmm. um, how basically Apple pulling, like basically stuff, when Apple stopped using them as a, a supplier, they went bankrupt. Qualcomm, if Apple stops doing that, they do have the Android marketplace. But if Intel can now play in that market space, that becomes a problem. I mean, so, true. true. Uh, I mean, Apple isn't using Qualcomm chips anymore. I mean, for instance, with the iPhone 10, it's strictly all 10 sorry, in 10 Max. It's strictly all Intel modems there. Yeah, um, this is not just mobile devices. We're talking about always on PCs, which is what Qualcomm has been really pushing for. This is where <gasps> Qualcomm showed that market lead against Intel. I mean, against. Um, uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, who's the other company again? Intel, right? Yeah, it's, it, yes, yeah. Intel that you just mentioned. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I, I had a brain fart there for two seconds. So um, basically, uh, I, I think they really is some threat to Qualcomm's business if this if it's proven that Apple has been sharing IP with Intel. I mean, uh, to Qualcomm's point, they they do have to prove and show that like. Uh, to me, if I'm them, I have to prove and show that this is much larger than just the mobile space. Like you said, right? This it, goes goes to everything that pertains to modem. So well, look at this. Is, look at this. If indeed that's proven that he shared those things, then they can go and they can sue Intel too and get royalties out of it because it's technically their proprietary information. So yeah. it could turn into a thing where they could still get they, they could still get paid monetary benefits from the tech that Intel is using, which was illegally obtained from uh legally illegally attained from apple via yeah. qualcomm who shared under specific guidelines to do to 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 allow information to be shared yeah if if any of this pans out in qualcomm's favor um intel is going to be under a microscope for every product they make yeah. afterwards for any type of proprietary <laughs> proprietary code or proprietary uh hardware solutions that they're using so Again, Apple won't we, we fall for much for it. It'll be Intel that'll catch more of the hell. I, like Intel's going to hit this way worse. But again, it's a, I, I, I would I would be shocked if this just weren't the cost of doing business. If we knew that Intel had a two to three year deficit on Qualcomm's radio tech, paying a fee or paying some sort of licensing agreement to Qualcomm after this is going to be deliberated in courts for a couple of years is just the fee they get to catch up. Right. If you like, Oh man, they're going to charge it. You know, it's $10 billion. Well, that's the courts are going to play that. Then they're going to appeal. They're not going to yeah. pay any, anytime soon. It's not really going to be a punitive action against a mega corporation like Intel. And over that period of time, Intel has learned how to catch up to Qualcomm radio tech. Again, it, it doesn't really, 
it, it doesn't really affect punishment. It doesn't really move the needle on mega corporations doing business this way. And in fact, now it's I, I would be shocked if there weren't boardroom meetings with people going, well, how much risk are we in? Oh, you know, like an acceptable amount. And when we get caught, we're going to pay a couple billion dollars, but we'll have made X number of billion dollars by not yeah. waiting out and catching up organically. So really, it's in our best interests to do this. Um, and hope it we don't don't get caught. But if we do, that conversation. Yeah, there was definitely someone had that conversation. You know, they probably kind of air gap that conversation to, um, you know, um, the CEOs or whatever to Tim Cook and whatever. The probably top executives didn't have uh, a say in it, but someone had that conversation. Like, you know, how much risk are we taking, and can we absorb, you know, any kind of um, you know, negative impact from it? And the answer was probably yes. I, I would definitely agree with you that that conversation was had. Yeah, this goes in light. I mean, you know, we've talked about Apple over the years and also how they do business. And uh, their business practices, to me, have been very interesting how they've been able to strong arm. And even in the case here where, um, you know, Qualcomm's like, no, you know, you we here's our chip. You can use it, but you need to do an audit on the software. And they refuse. Like, I mean, that's that's what Qualcomm is claiming. They refuse to do a contractual audit. You know, it says there in the contract that say yeah. in the contract it says every six months we gotta come down, check out, make sure you know everything is okay. And they're like, nope, sorry. You no, know, sometimes nah. Apple systems might not be compatible with regular audit tools. We can't just say <laughs> auditing means anything. It could just have been a snafu. They didn't get the letter for the audit, man. You never know. <laughs> They were guilty of sin, man. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to me, that to me, that's even the, like it's it's one of the funniest things because um, I think from the from the uh, what do you call it deposition, it was shown that yes, they refuse to actually access an audit. Forget everything else. For me, that already shows there is a crime taking place or there is something going on when you do not allow somebody you you've already have a deal with to say, okay, I need to check what you're doing. To make sure that my, my software isn't and then you know um you know it comes out that you're having conversations with somebody else about software you didn't make it's not like it's your own program this is somebody else's thing so you know of course lawyers can argue maybe it's just general conversation or whatever the case may be but uh like you know we've all said it just it just goes to the face of how and i think i think personally for me it's sad because Apple is a trillion dollar company. This is where I think that argument goes into when it goes into legal battle and becomes how big to fail, how much, you know, like all those kind of things of like, okay, this is the biggest company in the world and the biggest American company as well, right? So do we, do we hit them hard? You know, it's kind of like the ITC ruling that came out yesterday. Qualcomm, yes, I'm sorry, Apple infringed on the patent, but we're not going to stop the ban. And he hasn't said anything. So it's almost yeah. like, uh, let me decide how I should affect the biggest tech company, or the biggest company on the planet, and also um, affect the, you know, America as a whole, because this is the biggest American company. I mean, do you see it that way? Or, or am I just talking out my ass here? No, it, it, this this is there are so many moving parts, and this is why it's so frustrating that I I don't feel we ever really get to the bottom. We ever get that good information delivered to consumers that affects our perception of how we do business as individuals with companies that operate in ways that we might find shady. It gets dragged out. It goes through appeals. There never really is any kind of conclusive answer. Uh, it becomes a punchline to a long running joke. You know, Samsung paying off Apple for a dispute over the Galaxy S3. <laughs> it's still like something that we have to talk about uh, politically in our tech space because it still hasn't been completely resolved. So we know that this is this, this ceases to be a conversation about justice. This ceases to be a conversation about protecting the mechanisms that make a free market economy work. Again, free market doesn't work when mega corporations have carte blanche to just steal. You do need to apply some kind of regulatory pressure to make sure that you can't bully in a market based on your market position, because then you never get upstarts and you never get actual competition. You can just steal and you can steal with impunity. Um, again, I'm not saying that's what's happened here, but we do see a lot of smoke from that would suggest a fire that that's yeah. what happened here. And uh, in, until we can get some kind of concrete disclosure, 
your sentiment is exactly where I think a lot of us are going to be. Am I just talking out my ass? What the hell's going on? I, I would like to be able to vote with my wallet better than just speculations and, you know, uh, courtroom proceedings that are kept under lock and key. And that kind of stuff, I think, does eventually um, influence the market. But they've done an amazing job over the last 10 years of obfuscating what happens under these legal proceedings to prevent it from affecting the market like it should. Yeah, I definitely agree. Any more thoughts, guys? No, it's, I think we're all in agreement. Um, it depends on how this goes. Uh, <laughs> it's a win-win for Apple regardless, but uh, it's it's kind of it's still shaky. Yeah, I mean, and it's sad because I don't think any of us want to see business done this way, but it's kind of becoming normalized. And that's where I feel like we need to push back against yeah. this kind of behavior. I yeah, I mean, you, you are right with that. that. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say the one thing I would add is Qualcomm does not have the option of saying we're not going to work with Apple. Like I think we've stated a multiple times, that's the biggest, you know, company in the world. You can't cut yourself off from that market. So regardless well, of how everything well, they're not working with Apple right now. <laughs> well, I'm saying regardless of how everything works out, if it turns out that it's in your best interest to work with Apple, they will have to work with Apple. So no matter how you look at it, it's just like Apple is throwing a lot of weight around. And there's no way that they that, that this ends out in any way, basically affecting them negatively, at least from a financial standpoint. I mean, true. I mean, be, because I mean, at the end of the day, uh, this goes back to uh, I hate to say it, fan base, right? Um, Apple has created such a loyal fan base that stuff like this does not even flinch in their mindset, right? Um, any other smart, I mean, the other company in mobile space that has a a decent amount of fan base and only with one product that is galaxy users with the galaxy Note. but even they are more i i'm, I'm you know what? i'm just going to diss apple fan base because i usually do anyway so i'm not going to be pretend here it, they are more knowledgeable to say okay something's up here be, the reason i'm saying that is because when this news broke um uh, you know, sites carried it out but no one really gravitated to is because they maybe one they thought just another lawsuit or not understanding the fact that Apple in at least according to the allegations really did something erroneous here you know because to me there's been just no they won't no cover they won't cover it until they're forced to but they remember they had no problem going off off the tangent about the note 7 battery or even the note uh, the the one case of uh, an explosion on the oh. note 10 which hasn't been proven Oh, sorry, not 10, sorry. No, nine. I'm moving to the future. My bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're, you're definitely right, Warren. You're definitely right there. So I mean, but that's that's always going to be this space. The, the space that a lot of those big sites work from are from a space where Apple is a technology that they know and understand, Cheek, and it's a part of their, and it's a part of their sort of nerd tech sort of uh, hipster world. So going against that is going against their own identity. So they'd rather leave that on its own the thing versus galaxy users and other users that don't identify themselves they don't have a galaxy and identify with it because they have a galaxy because they like an android phone people have iphones and especially in that space especially the events we met these guys at the iphone for them is an identity so if you start to diss and grip and bring down apple you're challenging an identity that you've been attached to so yeah, it's we, like i, I was on a podcast on I was on a podcast on Thursday where I got pretty heated um, with some people who I feel are are very um, who, sensitive. Who, who? Call them out. I, I can diss them for you. Remember, I don't even care. I, I, I actually, I'd rather people like in our chat and stuff share that around themselves so that I don't have to be the guy. Because because it got who to was, a point was, where the who Apple was in fans. The chat, please let me know. Who that this, is. this is where actually... you need to bring me and Ian. Let's do that real quick. You see, you see Juan, Juan, Juan is going to be classic wrestling. You tag us in. We're coming from the high yeah, ropes. The no, elbow. no. Actually, this, 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 was, this was a good uh, – I think this was emblematic of exactly what you were discussing, where the, f the, the, the four of us have gotten into some really good knockdown, just some real brutal debates, right? I mean, like, we've gotten real heated at each other. We've been doing this for a couple of years. And I feel like we're close enough that when we have a staunch, like, philosophical disagreement and we really take it out on each other. Oh, yeah, come like back Man next of Steel. Week, we could, yeah, and how you're wrong about that. <laughs> um, no, but but we, we come back next week 
and we we understand the rules. We understand our relationship and we understand our friendship where we can have that kind of disagreement. One of the things that was a major disservice to the podcast I was on on Thursday was there was pushback. There, there were assertions made and then it just got instantly personal between people who really weren't friends. And there were folks like calling each other out legit like like what you're doing is ruining YouTube kinds of comments oh, and, and like blustery swearing about just how frustrating it is to be with zealots when they're making a case for why they are a zealot for the team that they support. <laughs> um <laughs> okay so it, it got it got real gross and uh, it was a real bad look for tech commentary in general but i'm sure oh. other people can find it and share that if yeah can. guys can, let uh, me know uh, what let me uh, uh, send it in the link and we're bringing channels in the chat to say that we never we never sit here and talk about the flaws of the system androids segment in terms of long-term support for premium phones. <laughs> All right, let's put, let's, let's put, 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 no, and, and let me back on something because that's coming wait, from an app. That's coming oh, from an Apple user. It's it been a while since the Warren ran. Go for it, Warren. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> iOS 12 on their old iPhone or whatever in terms of long-term support. Yeah, they cripple the crap out of the OS because it doesn't match the hardware with it, and it slows down your phone, which they admitted to freaking doing. But you will sit there and challenge everyone else. You will sit there and say, well, Android phones are your long-term support. You know what the one thing Android phones don't have happen to them? That is their phones freaking break when an iOS, when a new update comes out because actual this, actual freaking uh, carriers test the software. Instead of rolling it out and it breaks, like the time it broke calls on iOS, I think, 10, or the time the text messaging just stopped working in iOS Remember 11. when you couldn't type the letter I on the keyboard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, I don't, so, you don't so, see that stuff on, on other on other. So, phones like that so yeah so 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 to warren's point here and and again if it, it, like i tried to do during this podcast last week and <laughs> utterly failed at um in being the guy who was going to try and cool everything back down um the the thing that i think a lot of techies are struggling with oh, oh, oh. when they when they are fans of individual companies is that none of these companies are special <clears throat> apple is not special and i've heard this argument a lot about well, with iOS, you get a ton of software support. Look, you can get iOS 12 for iPhone 6s. And that's, Warren, that's Warren, neat. Warren, but the main reason why is because Apple has been in a holding pattern trying to fix the problems that they've had since iOS 9. I don't think Apple gets a ton of credit for three years of bug fixes to finally get us to iOS 12, where I'm, I'm liking this experience a lot better where I'm, I'm encountering fewer software issues than I have had on iOS 11 or iOS 10. Agreed. Whereas over the same period of time, Google had big problems with how pretty Android was. And so we actually saw a lot of graphics-y stuff that won't play well with three to four-year-old phones today. When we finally start getting into Oreo and now playing with Pi, unfortunately, the evolutionary model of keeping older phones supported for that doesn't work out as well. We can still take those manufacturers to task, though, for not providing good bug fixes, not providing security updates and patches, and not keeping up with the back end. But a lot of Google services are now updated free from the OS. So you still get individual pieces of software support. It's just not as clean as getting an iOS update. But again, Apple isn't special. They have the same problems as any other manufacturer. They have the same software development issues as Google and the companies that skin Android, like LG software support or Samsung software support. So this is where we need to kind of break free of this type of fanboy prioritization. I, I, I am a huge fan of LG hardware, but I will talk till I'm blue in the face about how terrible their marketing strategy is and the num numerous people in my circles of family and friends who should not buy an LG. <laughs> I have not had that conversation with an Apple fan where we can rationally discuss, these are the problems facing this company. This is the claim they're making with a $1,000 smartphone. And this is how they're just like every other manufacturer. Oh, no, 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 no. We, we love criticizing Google and the Google and the Android ecosystem, but we haven't, it, it gets real sore. It gets real, real spiky. When you, poke, when, when you poke at the reality distortion field, you start to poke at the thing <laughs> and the air starts to come out of it. And by the way, 
iOS, I don't care if your iOS is the, if, if the number is the same across all devices. If that version of software can't work the same way or have the same features as the other phones because it's older hardware, it's fragmentation. It yeah, exists no, in the it, same it's, way. It's, it's oh, yeah. feature fragmentation versus it's the same operating thing. system uh, fragmentation. The thing, the thing I, I, I let's, uh, I'm going to give Apple credit and then immediately take that credit away. <laughs> okay. Um, iOS 12 is running like a champ on my uh, iPhone SE. It's running so well, it makes me mad picking up the iPhone XS that I just unboxed yesterday. That I mean, this is this is great. My my old iPhone SE is running awesome. Now, with an uh with with an A9 chipset, and because I have a launch um SE, so it's only got 16 gigabytes of storage. I mean, this is like the dark days of Apple for making a nice phone. Um, but for that software to be running so well on a phone that old. We haven't seen progress. Apple hasn't pushed the boundaries of what they can do with software design, really leveraging newer hardware. If if iOS 12 runs this well on an A9, and I prefer the experience of, of iOS 12 running on an A9 over this amazing A12 Bionic with a higher resolution screen and nicer cameras, where has Apple gone over four generations of iPhone? Their software development shouldn't be praised for that. They've been just cleaning up the problems they created going from iOS 6 to iOS 9 and then from iOS 9 to iOS 12. So, so this is, again, we, we can point that out. We can rationally have this discussion. So it's great that you got four years of software support, but you got four years of software support to fix the problems that they've had over three years. I mean, like I said, if you say consumers have support because the reality distortion field is because the way they market it, they market away the problems. They create new problems, but they market away the no problems. I'm just like you. I'm pretty sure you believe that. Yes, they should remove the headphone jack because that's going. That's been a problem in creating the phone. Well, it needs to be thinner in that case. And you well, don't, I mean, we don't need the to go putting, jack putting no, because, words into other people's mouths. Yeah, but I, 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 no, no, it's not. It's not me putting all the words. It's me giving the same sentiment to people that say stuff like right. this. No, 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 I appreciate it. It, 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 it. That's where I'm going towards, and it's just like you know, they don't need to include a dongle, or they, or or, or somebody argued with me. There's a whole reason Apple isn't using fast charging, or didn't include fast. Excuse me, didn't include fast charger inside of it because they have a whole nother strategy. No, it's called money. Yeah. Money, 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 and trust me, if the other manufacturers get away with it, they do it too. No, no, and, and and I don't fault Apple for looking for the best way to get money from the consumer to maximize they're, profits. They're, they're they're a business with shareholders. That's simply what they have to do. Where I have a problem is when people are led to believe that a lack of a feature is in itself a feature. Courage. Yeah, courage, man. Courage. Money, 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 money. But yeah, no, I think we. Can, I think money. It's money, 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 money. money. <laughs> Talk about, right? uh, yeah. Yeah, every time they say courage, it's money. So this is Sir Cakington in the uh, in the live chat. Apple create the problem, sell the solution, and I really feel that that has become a That's major a major strategy across the Mac and the iOS product lines. That is right I now. I, feel, I can't I feel wait. Like, to, oh, sorry. I, I was just going to say that the the safest product right now over Apple's business strategy seems to be the iPad. Yeah. Like an iPad Pro, after you factor in the cost of buying a pencil and a keyboard case feels like one of the most complete visions of what Apple can deliver when they're not gutting a product to sell you a, a specific dongle to replace what they removed. Oh, uh, I have that problem on Macs, and now we have that problem on iPhones. And it's, it's I not- can't. All right, guys, let's, let's move over to the, the LTE issues and the Wi-Fi issues. Now, some people have, I know we can keep talking about Apple. We can do that with many other companies, but we're still gonna be talking about Apple anyway with this. So <laughs> um, people have complained about LTE issues, Wi-Fi uh, connectivity issues as well. Um, have you guys heard this? What do you think? Is Dude, this another level of this antenna is gate? This is just simple. These people don't know how to hold these phones, man. They just need to learn how to hold your phones right, okay? I understand why people are talking about like issues with Wi-Fi and LTE. If you hold your damn phone right, it will work properly. So, so, so okay. using, using use phone, should no, I? Don't, don't hold, hold it. it like that, man. Your hand is on the sides of the phone. What are you doing? Like, like this? Oh, that's a little better. A, a little better. It's a little better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also like your torso is blocking the whole rear of the phone. How yeah. dare you? How's an antenna signal supposed to pass through your hand? What are you doing, man? 
I mean, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> it, it seems like, I mean, it doesn't look like it's as widespread as antenna gate, but it looks like they're having some issues with, uh, with the iPhone, which, you know, uh, I guess is to be expected. But then again, uh, Apple hasn't stated anything to this effect. They haven't come out to say this is something they're noticing. There's an issue, um, and most likely we won't hear anything for a while. Uh, I presume, unless I'm wrong. Somebody can say I'm wrong. Nope. No, I don't think you want to. I, I, I was really doing on a chip, and I was trying to keep that off the microphone. But <laughs> no, I, I wasn't going to disagree with you. No. <laughs> Uh, uh, there's a, I've noticed some connection issues here and there with all my own 10s Max. I don't know if you have. Uh, no, about... I, I haven't noticed any. And some people have also noticed OLED issues as well. Um, and LG supplied the OLEDs yet again. So, um... but you know, this is one of those things. I I'm I'm getting a little frustrated. Um, not to white knight for Apple here after I just had so many critical things to say about the company, but this whole color shift on OLED talking point that it's this major concession or it's a significant problem when basically all OLEDs feature some kind of off access color shift. I, I, I hate to be that guy after, you know, saying like, well, we want to we want to, you know, listen to people when they have concerns about premium expensive electronics. But I think that's just going to have to be something that we encounter on a majority of OLED panels. I haven't experienced an OLED myself that didn't have some kind of color shift, especially for last year. While people were griping about LG and blue color shift, Samsung delivered some of the ruddiest OLED panels they've ever created. We're, we're, it, was a down, it was a step down, in my opinion, from I, the color accuracy that we had on the Galaxy S7 going to the Galaxy S8. I I mean the worst experience I had was um, the Pixel while I was doing the live unboxing. It just turned I I, I appreciate that some companies can be better. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying yeah. that. I, absolutely, and and I saw on the Pixel Two XL, which I didn't I didn't spend any time uh, any appreciable time with, but it was pretty easy to off access and see a, a distinct blue tint. Mine was on on access. <laughs> Oh, okay. So and I, I didn't, I didn't yeah. see that. So no, maybe no, my, my was just as soon as I, I opened the box, I was holding it. And I was like, people were like, it's blue. I was looking somewhere else. I was like, oh shit. And and <laughs> and maybe there are some concerns there. And I remember especially too that there was also a lot of chatter as to what kind of apps or plugins, or if you rooted and rommed it, could you change the color tone? And a lot of people were successful in changing the color tone on the Pixel from what Google uh, thought was the correct look for their phone. Mm -hmm. But um. But even for that, you know, if I pick up my iPhone and I disable all of the color enhancing light sensing features and I just get to their panel color, it's ruddy compared to the LCD on my um, LG G7. So color tone issues aside, um, I'm, I'm still not I, I still don't think this discussion that we're having about looking at your phone at off angles is the deal breaker when almost all panels, um, all OLED panels experience some kind of drift like that. I mean, I've got my LG V30 still here, which supposedly had a terrible OLED screen. And when I look at the screen, it's fine. When it's on a desk, yeah, it color shifts. But I'm not interacting with my phone to any meaningful degree from that distance or from that angle. So I, I really don't understand why this has become such the the gotcha. Well, I mean, I mean, at least for this one, it's because of how how bad the Pixel was last year. So mm -hmm. everyone is everyone's just taking notice to to you know to a heightened degree. Uh, Fat Produce also says that uh, what about charging issues? Unbox Therapy has a video about that this morning. I haven't seen the video yet, but let's just add that to the list of. I'm watching, I'm watching it now to try to see what's going on. <laughs> yes, let, 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 let us know. Let us I mean, I, I have the smaller, I have the iPhone XS, and it's just slow. I, I mean, it's slow. I, I, I don't know that that's an issue. I, it was there, If there was something more significant, I haven't seen Unbox. I don't watch Unbox Therapy. Um, I, I haven't seen anything else that suggests to me that there's... Yeah, somebody sent me a, somebody sent, sent a tweet about that uh, earlier. I was like... I just I looked at it. I was going to respond saying I I have no idea about it. So I'm just curious about after people have used it for several hundred hours, if it still has the color shift. 
because this could just be you know par for the course when it comes to the new phone or well, kind of like when you break in speakers or, or something yeah. like that yeah. So yeah, I'm I mean, just, I'm just curious to know if, if I mean, it definitely could be. I, I think it's more. I think it's just more reaction that a lot of people from last year. You know, like in my case, I had color shift and burn in in the first two days. I mean, mm. you don't do that on a, on a display, and a lot of people had that. So I mean, it was just a really bad batch from LG, and since LG is making this one again too, so you can understand where people are going. Let me check. You know, that's the first thing. It's like, look, 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 look. So it's probably a lot of that than is, but who knows what it plays out. But it seems that at least there are some issues mounting small, I would say small issues mounting left and right. We'll see if they're actually anything sizable or we can account to this, we can amount uh, this to a the typical 5% issues for, you know, production batch. Okay, so so some people are saying that the problem that people are having with the iPhone 10s Max is that it won't charge when the phone is idle or if the screen is off. So oh. on my 10s, I've only I haven't even plugged it into the stupid little brick that came in the box. I a wireless charger? My, no, I hooked it up to my car charger and my old first generation Nokia Qi. Uh wireless charger and it seems to charge fine off of both of those when i have the screen off and the phone goes down to idle so huh. I, I i don't know if it's maybe you know the hypothesis could be that there could also be a problem with the chargers that are included sensing some kind of power state in the phone because i know my car charger is just a dumb piece of usb ports uh that could also be something because apple really likes to manipulate um how your phone talks to the charger to make sure power is being directed the way that it should. Mm. Yeah, it could be. That could very well be the case. All right, enough Apple mulling. Um, we know they're going to have tons of issues. So, um, yeah. It's, anyway, uh, let's well, move forward. This, like, this, is, this is where, when we say we want to be fair to a company like Apple, look at the conversation we just had where we it's effortless. It's, it's not hard to go through the issues we've had with basically every single manufacturer from Google and the Pixel to LG yeah. with with their QA, um, their consistency issues on their OLED panels. And, you know, some people get lucky with some phones and some people don't. We, we can easily move between these things. It shouldn't be a shocking piece of commentary or a hostile piece of commentary to point to Apple and say, you're going to have some manufacturing issues, especially in the first batch of devices. Apple is not special. They yeah. are a manufacturer just like anyone else. And that, that I think, is the, the main point I'm trying to drive home with my family and friends is those of them in iOS land don't know what the other side looks like anymore. I'm hearing criticisms from them that would have been applicable to, like, LG G4s and Galaxy S5s. And you're like, oh, but I need this because I need the most screen. And you're like, a fraction of a millimeter of chin doesn't make that big a difference. You're like, oh, but no, Apple's all screen now. And you're like, yeah, but they were late to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, very true, very true. Let us move on to the other big news that broke uh, this week. Facebook uh, announced that it got hacked, uh, leaving 50 million, about 50 million accounts exposed. Um, and in order to prevent any more damage, Facebook basically forced affected users, including myself, uh, to reset your password. So basically, they logged you out and you had to uh, reset. They reported to authorities. I believe this hack happened recently. I can't remember, was it this week they found out or was it last week they found out? So they found out relatively recently and um, they informed the authorities and also they are taking steps to, you know, deal with it. Now, um, a lot of people are pissed and annoyed that this is happening with Facebook yet again, as they would say. My mindset when this happened, honestly, was like, we get hacked all the time, big companies. This is just the state of life we're in. I'm actually happy that I have Facebook, whether it's because they're trying to change face or they just had to do it or whatever the case may be, they reset the accounts immediately and they also informed everyone as opposed to, and I'm going to bring up Experian because they did not do that. And just to give a juxtaposition when they got hacked, which is social security numbers. So I'm going to put it out there for you guys. 
what do you think? Uh, Facebook's hack, how did they handle it? Uh, you know, how do you perceive hacking of different accounts, especially we live in an online world where we have so many different, you know, online access points that we have to have uh, passwords for. So uh, Sam, I'll kick it off for you. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I'll take a step back first and say, I would be less pissed off at Facebook if they hadn't prior to this coming out. Um, basically confirmed that oh, yeah. when you give them your phone number for a two-factor authentication, they use that phone number, which you gave them for security purposes, to go out and deliver ads to you. So Facebook isn't really in my good graces. Right <laughs> um, I, I, I think the combination of both things make me really, like, I've been, I'm so close to deleting Facebook right now. And that's not to say, oh, hashtag delete Facebook now. I am so close to just stopping my use of Facebook. No, 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 yeah. Sam, 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 Sam. As a Facebook shareholder, please oh. keep using yeah. your account. I, I, I am not qualified to deliver any kind of financial advice. It might be time to dump that stock, bro. No, no, no. no. Facebook keeps on no. 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 I don't know. Anything, I don't know. Yeah. If anything, it'll double probably next year somehow, some random way. Yeah. I'm just saying, right now, because it's not it's not the user sentiment, because the users are not the customers. Right now, the customer sentiment. I had this huge sit-down conversation with uh, a, a PR rep from a major technology company um, who we may have already discussed a different department of theirs on this show today. Uh, and it was a really eye-opening uh, conversation when Trisha and I were talking about. We we sat we sat them down um, after a Newegg episode, and he was asking us questions about like YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that. And when we started describing what our Facebook reality was like, he really started like on his phone looking at things like the numbers he was getting from Facebook, the amount of money that they were spending Brandy. on targeted ads on Facebook. And when you really look into that kind of information, I don't think a lot of money people are going to see what they want to see out of that kind of spend. So that's that's like the very beginnings of a long-term conversation as to what the value of a social media platform like Facebook could be. But I think we're getting real close to peak Facebook. There, there, there's you're running out of people on the planet to sign up for this service. You're running out of uh, first world, you know, moneyed individuals that can that can properly interact in commerce. Uh, with yeah, I think I think Facebook. that part, not people. I think, I think that's the part. I think yeah. we're we're hitting that. And and once corporations start looking at the money that they pour into Facebook and the value that they get out of Facebook, I think we're going to start cresting the top of that hill real soon. Oh, I mean. <laughs> Facebook stock is fine. I'll just put my financial advice there. Um, <laughs> at least for now, for now. They did have a very saying, rough week uh, with well, the, the two articles from Forbes. I forgot to mention that one. The one uh, from the former head of WhatsApp and then also the other article by the, the head of Facebook's crypto uh, uh, division basically dissing the former head of WhatsApp for being yeah. a hypocrite. And even though he was being hypocritical himself, and then also the announcement that the heads of Instagram are also leaving the company as well. But so, that, that's to be expected. Look, yeah. at YouTube. Look at what happened with YouTube. What, after, after after Google bought YouTube, the heads of YouTube left after a few years. So it just it happened. It's, it's called the cash out point. Yeah. yeah. Cash now. That's all yeah. The, the one with the, the head, I mean, Sam and I had this discussion, the one with the head of uh, um, WhatsApp, you know, when he said, you know, uh, what, what Facebook, what, Face, he he couldn't stay in um, some summarizing, but he basically said he couldn't stay in a company like Facebook because of who they are. I kind of side with the crypto uh, head a little bit because he's been hypocritical. I mean, look, you made money off this thing. If you sat down there and thought that they would not try and recoup that cash somehow, then something is wrong with you. That's just it. That's simply it. Now, Bash, Bash's company. You, you, you can always say, I don't like that. I wish you could find a better way to do it. But there is no way they will pay you $18 billion and then you expect them to go, no, we'll leave WhatsApp the way it is. I'm not, yeah, you can't be stupid. Let's just call it that. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that, was, that, that was a silly, that, so the, the, the former CEO of WhatsApp, he was just being silly. He was trying. A, it's the smartest to, thing he did was sell his company. Yeah, he was he's white. Because if he's, think of, he's thinking, if he has thoughts like this, Thank God he sold his company. 
Yeah, no, but 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 to but to talk about this particular issue with the breach, I like how Facebook handled it. They let the authorities know and they let the news outlets know. Yes, we've been breached. They confirmed it. Good, you know about it. I think more companies should be way more um, proactive in letting their consumer base know exactly what's happened. Um, I think when the first time I heard of it was like a flaw was reported about whatever, and then right off the bat, like I think the next story I see is Facebook confirms like fifty million. Uh, yeah, and then reset. three hours later, my I think two or three hours later, my account reset. Like yeah, it's it's, it's, it's I like I, I, that I didn't I didn't I didn't get an account reset notification myself. No, that uh, means you're not affected. Like everybody who was uh, affected was literally out using Facebook and just says you're logging off. And I'm like, huh? What? What? Then I had to be re- um, set a new password. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, oh, okay. Um, Actually, I don't even know that I've tried opening Facebook since then. I should. I was just about to do this exact same thing. Well, I two factored the hell out of Facebook the second they showed up. So to keep my stuff protected, but I two factored damn near everything. So, but, so, but that's well, also isn't fun. that the that... other funny story though? Is yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your two-factor identity is also being used to target ads. Oh, I don't. I don't do the phone number one. I always oh, do the one okay, through, okay, just okay. through an app or through Authy. I never. You, oh, actually, okay. you should not do the SMS one because that could easily be hacked through social engineering. You should do one yeah. through an app but specifically. There you go, guys. And I yes, I made a mistake. It's not. It's not Experian. It is Equifax. Equifax. Yeah, uh, yeah those are the guys yeah. who didn't tell us. For months. Yeah, but nobody. Yeah, Equifax is like the useless credit bureau of the other two. It's it's just like if your credit's that bad, they pull the, your creditor will pull Equifax just because they're trying to actually give you the damn loan <laughs> or give you whatever credit card. But they're like the their data is typically old. They take forever to update their stuff. Um, so this is why I'm not surprised with the actions that happen in terms of their breach. They don't have a sense of being being aware of their data. And being aware of what data they had and the value of it and protecting that data specifically. So their their moves wasn't surprising considering how they operate as a business. You TransUnion and Equifax operate very, very differently. They're more up to date. They're keeping your information and, and your credit information up a lot more sooner. That's why they that's why they don't have that. They're not they're not if they had a security breach, they'll probably tell you ahead of time and then probably try not to charge you money to protect your own credit report oh you mean like lost. you mean like experian that says you should sign up for a service yeah no no, no, you can, no, no, no you, can, you know you can sign up for the service you can sign up for the services for free and you can do the paid ones as well too but it's not like after a breach they're trying to sell it to you for 10 bucks like equifax <laughs> did think about that uh, well, we lost a, a credit report that you have no choice to have that we have to collect and we screwed up your data hey ten dollars will protect it for you again Create the problem, problem, sell the solution. Exactly what they did. They did a yeah. Great job. Well, eventually, Equifax is going to sell you like a dongle that you can plug into your computer to protect your uh, credit reports. It'll be great. Exactly. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, it's a fun tech week, guys. There's a lot of. Uh, uh, Oh, good. I turned it on, Fat Protus. I, I suggest everyone turn on two factor authentication. Yeah, either, I, I use it, either use it through the Facebook app or use an app like Authy is a good one that you can you can store a lot of these two factors within it. I you use know, Google Authenticator. Is also Google Authenticator. Authy I like because it lets it, it does everyone. It does Google's, it does Microsoft's, it does all them I, sort of into I one, like one Stray life. from the company that's already keeping my emails and my yeah I, I would try using information and stuff like google authenticator is 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 fine and it's yeah. it is way better it is substantially better than sms and it's phenomenally better than having nothing but yeah. i do like this idea of stepping outside the ecosystem for some sort of other managed support on a authentication like that yeah. yeah. All right. So let, let's move over to something a little bit less, less, you know, sad news since we've just done like all negativity today. Yeah, um, that's not going to change. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm I, so I happy know that on, on a podcast, you, I'm not you, the only cranky one. Once I mentioned this, the week of uselessness. I know. And you're complaining so about the negativity within the uselessness. Once I mentioned this, you're going to probably go this. So I'm going to share my screen and showcase. Reports are stating that LG is going to launch uh, the W7, the Wear a smartwatch, that is a mechanical and OLED display as well. So it's got mechanical gears in there. 
according wow. to reports okay. and an OLED display, uh, mm. which is really nice. Um, uh, that means I'm sure it could last as a watch for a pretty long time as well. Um, but we have to wait and see how it actually looks. Um, but I thought that would be something nice, you know, something different from, you know, the <laughs> negativity. So, I mean, you guys don't seem impressed. So, all right. No, it, I mean, it, it would be nice. The, the, the problem isn't whether or not. Oh, uh, here we go again. Me. Yeah. Go no, it, it's, it's not whether or not I'm, I'm, I'm particularly invested in any one manufacturer. I, I feel bad for LG and I feel bad for the companies, especially the watch manufacturers that are on board Android Wear, uh, Wear OS right now. Um, because I, I, I just haven't seen the leadership from Google. I haven't seen the inspiration from the top down as to this is what wearable computing can look like. And it's the thing that for as much as I can pan Apple on their phone strategy, they're so far ahead. They're so, they, they, they were so far behind, caught up and then surpassed Wear OS so fierce. And it also is another great argument in favor of having a slightly more closed up ecosystem like Samsung does on uh on their gear uh watches yeah but the thing about really it disappointing the thing about wear os though is that they made wear os close i mean none of the manufacturers yeah. can actually do anything right. other than include an app that's it like you can't change the way the os operates and granted there's a new update now which is the update i play with uh um about yeah, and, our, uh, and that that, that on its own about. wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if Google actually seemed to to show or were or was yeah. demonstrating that they had any vision for this platform. This, I said, uh, I've said this uh -huh. so many times. You you called it Wear OS, and there's this huge opportunity to look at things other than just strapping another mini smartphone on your wrist. You can wear an operating system. So where is Google in actually driving Adidas? You know, yeah. shoes, Nike, pants, chest straps, hats, audio, video, augmented reality. Mom would, mom would where like are your hat. operating system? Do something. Uh, speaking instead, of, they keep just chilling with this. Like, oh well, we'll kind of update your watch screens, and you, it will change the the animations when you open a card, and it'll slow your watch down even more is basically the only thing that I've seen from I, them over the last two years. I think one would like a Kangol hat that's got Wear OS what? in it. Right? <laughs> some bone conduction speakers, get like, you know, some heart rate monitors okay, okay, in there. Okay, okay. The GPS. Okay. Stop, stop dreaming. Stop it. You know what? I, 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 you know my stance of smartwatches, and I've said it forever, and I keep getting proven right, which is kind of disappointing. Outside of Apple, who I think has stepped their game up tremendously in that space and really trying to push it forward, unlike every, unlike sort of Google, who's the other big person in this space. Samsung also does their thing as well too, but they're in their own little space with Tizen, and 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 sort of trying to compete with Apple and, and that sort of thing. I don't think Google's going to get serious about this Wear OS thing until they probably get to their like their that, that thing with fuchsia where they're putting one os to design them all i think that's where they're going to get serious about this for now it's there here it is it's there it's the windows phone of our ecosystem it exists we won't acknowledge it but so much don't expect to watch from us but we'll put that pixel watch out when fuchsia's ready and then and then make sure to body the rest of the not body all the manufacturers ahead of time I think so make right. sure we're the number one sellers to our phone and not anyone else. Yeah, I, 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 I think you're very right there. I, I really do think like LG should think, you know, I, everybody should design their own OS if it's going to go into this space. If Google isn't going to really push Wear OS the right way, which I just don't think they're going to. Now, when I think we get to this Google Fusion and they're putting their, their, their version of how they Windows, like Windows as a service and everything and Google is Google as a service on everything. Then you may want to think about using that future OS if you're allowed to design it in your way on your watches and stuff like that. Similar to like how you know people use Android because you can design Android in the way you want to on your on your hardware to make it work that way and still have the support of the entire ecosystem, but have your individual sort of look to it. And I just don't think that's going to happen with Wear OS. Yeah. Well, and then also with, with Fuchsia, I think we're seeing a Google that's starting to replicate some of the biggest criticisms we've had of Microsoft. There's all this potential. They have this huge potential, but are they really going to realize it? And now we've seen Google with too many projects start something up, get really hyped up about it, get really excited about it, and then let it wither on the vine. 
and we've seen this a lot. And when Microsoft does this, they there is a consequence for that rightfully in the market. And I feel like if the only way that they can drive some vision or some or, or motivate some passion for developing in the wearable space is to gut the Android ecosystem and move us over to a Project Fuchsia style OS, which is more of a walled garden. That to me feels a lot like the change from Windows Phone 7 to Windows Phone 8. Yeah, I think um, L LG screwed themselves over by not using, um, what's the software again on the WebOS? Web yeah. yeah. they, they, Web they, they, they had one watch that was running That's what Web I was going to say. They should, they, should just, they should switch to using WebOS and um, so the, their watches, and as long as they get sync with an Android phone or whatever. Yeah, and, and they, has, <laughs> they also have an ecosystem because where, um, WebOS works for their, all their smart devices Yeah. WebOS. Other than an Android phone, they've actually, but, they've actually used it better than Palm ever did. <laughs> uh, but speaking yeah, of which, uh, one last thing just to cover, and I know Sam, you you spent some time watching it. Oculus announced a bunch of things: uh, some new hardware, some new um, software vision. They announced the Oculus Quest, uh, which uh, is their new standalone headset from the Oculus Go. Comes with two Rift-like controllers. Displays 1600 by 1440 for each eye. Um, looks to be they're trying to move into the space that, um, you know, Juan likes for his VR mobile. Um, obviously, less expensive, but this is 399 so it's up there in expense. <laughs> but it is it's interesting because I did watch some of the presentation and they talked about what they, what they want. And one of the things that uh, I can't remember who was on stage uh, from Oculus stated, he said, look, VR and AR to them are the same thing. It's just right now, um, the way the hardware works, you cannot have both of them working seamlessly, small, together at once. So you can't have just a pair of, if you watch the show, uh, the first on Hulu, about um, space travel, everybody just wears a pair of spectacles that either do AR or VR, like that's it. And that's what he said. He's like, that's pretty much what we want. But right now it's just not there. So there's this, you know, deviation. I don't want that. I want Jordan LaForge. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> you know, this is his eyes, right? Because he I, couldn't yeah. see. That's right. <laughs> I want that Jordan LaForge. I want to walk around with that, like just gold on. like. Like like oh boy yeah I, he, I, I he, he imagine, was just, yeah he was <laughs> looking like a nineties Kanye West I'm trying to get that man like oh. I want that <laughs> yeah, he looked like he, he looked like a character from uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven pretty yeah. much yeah he does <laughs> <laughs> well, but those yeah things are iconic yeah so um, uh, Sam uh, I know you watched uh, some of the Oculus yeah, presentation it's, 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 I I was really trying to figure out. Um, you know where they were trying to place it when the, when the announcement happened, but over the next the, um, the last few days, it, it makes sense now to me. Um, this is you know what this is really between the Oculus Go and the Oculus Rift. So if the Oculus Go is to um, you know gear uh, VR for you, like it's, it's too mobile phone centric for you, then you have you know um, the Quest. Which they're saying is the graphics should be similar to a last gen console. I don't believe it. We'll see. What, we'll see when it comes out. But I think for people who want to jump into the space, don't have an amazing computer to use, um, don't want to be tethered to a device while they're playing VR, that's not a bad idea. Um, the resolution itself doesn't seem too bad. Um, so it should give you some kind of. Uh, you know, so it, it, it shouldn't basically make you throw up. <laughs> but the problem <laughs> for me is at the end of the day, you're pushing a narrative that I think is going to disappoint a lot of people, which is this can do almost like you can port anything from the Rift should work on this. And that's not going to be true, right? You can't port games willy nilly back and forth because there are going to be certain things that a PC can do, like a, like a, a that this ex cool device except that can do. except if you're running Unreal Engine, which has proven to be the only engine that freely ports all the way from your mobile phone to your desktop. And yeah, but you're not going to have the same graphics quality from your mobile phone to they, your desktop. They did look. They, all they said is that you can port over. It doesn't say it's going to be the same graphical quality. I mean, it might, but they did say it's going to look like last gen. We we'll have to wait and see. 
So. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. But overall, I think it's a big move for them. I think this is taking them closer to what I hope to see with the uh, with the Rift 2 when it eventually comes out. They did kind of tease that it is in the work. Uh, in the works, um, so I'm, I'm really optimistic now for the n- not for the um, the the Oculus Quest, but more for the um, Rift Two. I did like what they stated about some of the compression techniques. So they had like this long section talking about um, how they were trying to make VR like you know on the Quest and the Go more compatible by saying, look, if you've got an image that's 4K. Um, on your regular Rift, like that's fine, right? That that's not a problem. But if you're on the Quest, so what they do, they do AI translation. And they got, I mean, it was funny because normally when you see presentations like this, they'll go, here's our AI upscale. It looks like the same thing. The guy was like, no, it's not the same thing. And the way he stated it was like, it's not the same. But when you're watching it, you won't pay, you will not know it's the same unless I was showing you and telling you it's the same. Um, so it's different. Um, and they showed some of the techniques to say, look, this is 95% similar to the full image, but we're using AI to fill in the gaps. And that allows us to actually have less rendering times and being able to push more of these kind of contents for you because you will always be looking in the way VR works is you always look at a fixed point, no matter what, even though you can look around, that fixed point moves with you. It's just yeah. fixed. Yeah. So... That's what they were saying. That once you're looking at a fixed point, we can actually take out some detail, fill it up with, with the uh, AI algorithm, and still give you the f- fidelity you're looking for. So basically, we're doing some eye trickery. But it was nice to hear some of that. Um, uh, yeah, no, take, I, 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 there, there are quite a few things that they, that they mentioned that are pretty cool. And one of those was like the overlay system, where they, they, they can basically overlay the outside world using the cameras on there. On your virtual world so basically you don't have sensors like you do with the rift you don't have the stationary sensors you can move around freely and still you not know, run into things i think that's really cool you know um and i think hey who knows maybe they'll try some ar stuff with it as well but right now it's a really cool way cool way to be untethered and also the way the um the controls connect to the headset that's pretty cool um, it's not using sensor that's connecting directly to the headset and it feels, I think what they say, it's, it's the same amount of, um, directionality that you get from those controls as you do from, um, the Rift controls. So that's okay. actually pretty cool. Huh. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, that is pretty much it. We're trying to make this a shorter show and yeah, we did an hour and two minutes. This is, this is fantastic. We are getting better, like doing the middle of the day. Instead of our early in the morning. Oh, our, our shows next month are going to be a lot longer, right? Oh, uh, yes, they will be longer. The onslaught <laughs> of harvest season <laughs> approaches. Yes, yes. Next next week starts. We have uh, Microsoft. We have LG um, making announcements next week. I'm sure somebody else will make a small announcement as well. Um, and the week after is Google, um, Huawei, uh, Razer phone. Um, and then OnePlus at some point, and then iPhone XR, right? Pretty much yeah. as well. So it's going to be a lot of things. But we've come to the part of the show where we uh, get to give out a prize. <laughs> you thought I was going to say we end here, but no, this trickery. This week, somebody in the chat gets to win this. This is the Moto E4 Plus, so the larger one. All right, Warren, um, who's going to win it? Yeah, so oh damn, he put me on the spot. <laughs> I mean, in that chat, <laughs> yeah. So you know, you guys keep commenting and talking, and, and somebody gets to win this. We just wait for Warren to. While Warren is searching, Juan, can you tell us what you currently have on the channel and what we can expect next week? Yeah, definitely. So um, on on the YouTube's, I uh, I put out yesterday my my examination of the new Pixel dongle. Uh, Google refreshed the headphone adapter, going from a nine dollar adapter to a twelve dollar adapter, and I had a lot of angry words to uh, share about my experience there. So that that was again in keeping with our theme this week. It was a very cranky video uh, to put out. Uh, also on the uh, SG. Uh, SGGQA podcast feed. I have my next creator chat uh, went up on Friday. Also, I sat down with uh, Justin and Logan from Tech Syndicate, 
we had a conversation about managing an audience's expectations because they they had a major shift in the kind of content that they were producing and what they were focusing on. And they faced some pretty significant backlash from the people who started, um, who were fans of their original content. So that that was a very insightful conversation uh, for what what the behind the scenes looks like for this kind of stuff. Then, of course, uh, last Thursday, we had a fun new egg now. We played a little Assassin's Creed. Uh, next Thursday, we're going to be doing even more, like sit down in a gaming PC building. So that's going to be a lot of fun, too. And then uh, next week, we're also going to have another episode of the Geek Book Club the show that Andrew and I uh, put together, reading the second chapter, the second book of uh, The Three-Body Problem. So some some oh, really exciting uh, Chinese sci-fi. Yeah, okay, yeah. I I hated and loved the first book, man. It tore me, like... It, it is a very... And, and, I, and I mean this pun intended. It's a very foreign style of storytelling. It, no, it, I mean, for me, it was fine. That wasn't the part that annoyed me because I get, like, I, I do get, I understand those cultural references a, a bit. It was just the, it was just the route to where they were. I was like, guy, like, whoever wrote this, man, like, you didn't need to do this. So, but that's just it is you, when, because you, did you do the audiobook? Yeah, I did the audiobook. So here's, here's what's really interesting about the conversation on the story three body problem is you start with the original Chinese author then you go through uh, the translation. And what we're finding in book two is book two has a different translator than book one. And the writing style is phenomenally different. And then you get the emotional delivery, the emphasis on language from someone reading it, which is another layer. I mean, it's a very small layer, but it's another emotional layer of translation on top. So you're like even further removed from what this book uh, probably uh, felt like in its original Chinese, uh, it, it's such a fascinating discussion. My over just my, my audio book, uh, the guy who who does the reading of the book tried to almost lay it like an old kung fu movie. I see mean, that's totally wrong. I know it's oh, like I it. I was in, 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 in <laughs> issue was, he was like he was like you're Ming, you are. I was like guy, and I don't think this story is going this way. Borderline <laughs> racist. Uh, no, I mean, right it, on the edge there. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, it was, it was, I believe, uh, it was either the guy, whoever's doing the, the reading is a Chinese American. Um, mm -hmm. But, but it just, I don't know whether that's what he was told or it just kind of came off that way. And I was like, okay, I, I guess this is what this book is all about. It's, it's a good book, though. I still like the book. And that's why I said I was just torn with all, all that stuff. But all right, cool. I'll, I'll check out, I'll check out the second, uh, tech check and show. Uh, Warren, do you have a winner for us? Yes. All righty. Uh, oops, hold on. Okay. Yeah, no, I got it. No, I just have to put <laughs> audio play. I, for this comment, I'm going to pick I Mike Tech as the winner because he said, damn it, make up your mind, Juan. We can't have you slamming Apple with truth and making excuses for them. Uh, <laughs> bum, ba, da, da. There you go, I Mike Tech. Love Congratulations. It. You win the Moto E4 Plus. Uh, I Mac, um, just hit me up on on instagram and just you send me uh send me info because you know we all know that it's not gonna work here on youtube um warren thank you very much for that what do you have on your channel right now what can we expect next week so i'm finally gonna put up a new video and it's gonna be my first impression of the iphone 10s max actual real first impressions that go longer than the first 20 you know hours with the phone which truthfully turns into about eight hours for most people to the point where I just picked it up until I got out of the box and there's my first impressions. So I'm actually going to try and get my actual real one from using the device for a week to give you guys an idea of what the iPhone 10 S max said. I have to think about saying that while I'm saying it to make sure I don't say it wrong is sort of all about so far. I do, you know, much of what I agree with you on Twitter is like kind of, I like that the fact that they have the big screen phone finally, that my you know hands can actually fit and type on properly. All right, cool. Anything else you can expect from me next week? Uh, that and coverage of all the stuff that's going down next week from LG, uh, Microsoft. God, there's so many down. I've lost count of how many we how, what what how many events are happening next week. Oh, all right, cool, cool. Uh, on my end, uh, we've got a couple of videos. We just did a look at the Hisen H9e Plus uh, ULED TV. It's about six ninety nine. Oh, I've... that's what you probably trying to remind me. Am I got to oh yeah, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> that same TV I'll be reviewing too. So that'll be coming down the pipeline. Uh, right. 
I I have to say that with the TV, uh, definitely go check out the video. Gaming actually looks really good on this TV. Uh, I'm I'm I was pleasantly surprised. You know, they they actually didn't mention it that much when I got the briefing. They said, "Look, it's a nice TV. It's got HDR10, blah blah blah, all this stuff." I fired up my Xbox Play. I was playing Forza for Horizon 4, and it looked really good. At least you know for for what the TV is. Um, we also have a review of the Dell G7 gaming laptop. This is like budget gaming laptop with the uh HJet Intel processor and we just dropped a video today on the Synology DS1618 plus uh this is a review from the perspective of my friend Marianne Sells who is a professional photographer I decided to give him the DS1618 uh, to use I didn't tell him how to use it I didn't tell him how to set it up I was like just do it and I wanted to see how a regular consumer uh, without any background knowledge, we'll be able to actually navigate this and uh, definitely go check out and hear his thoughts. Uh, he likes it, but there are a lot of things that he goes through that I think a lot of people will find quite interesting. Um, next week, we will have, uh, of course, coverage of LG's V40, uh, Microsoft's announcements. Um, also, we'll have a video on... Uh, on some headphones. I haven't done a uh, headphone comparison in a while. I'm looking at what I would consider the best noise cancel headphones to pick up and also the most overrated at the same time. So definitely check that out. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. I appreciate everyone in the chat for commenting. You guys are always lively every week. And it seems like everybody likes the 3 p.m. hour. So we are sticking with 3 p.m. to the happiness of uh, Mr. Juan Magnell. He's got at least he's won something today. Yeah. <laughs> And I, Mike, congratulations again. Hit me up so I can actually mail this out to you. Um, and uh, yeah, you can follow everyone. Check out Mr. Warren Bowman at bw1.com on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere on the web, and also his website, bw1.com. And then Mr. Juan Carlos Bagnell, you can find him on Some Gadget Guy on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you will not find him on Instagram TV, but you will find him Thursdays at... New Egg Now, uh, 1 p.m., uh, host the show there with Trisha Hirschberger and uh, some really fun, cool tech stuff that they check out every week. And uh, Black Iron underscore Man Sam, you can find him on Instagram and Twitter with the same handle. Um, and myself, it is Border Work on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Definitely hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts about the topics we had today, Go ahead and leave them in the comment section of this video. Uh, Thunder E saying thank you very much and always enjoy your entertainment. Damn.